Well, hello everybody and welcome to another episode and thank you once again for tuning in. Vintage lenses have become quite expensive recently. There are lots of very beautiful, very fancy ones you can buy, but the price tag is often pretty high, but not always. Lots of vintage lenses sell quite cheaply and as far as I can tell, some of the cheapest are short zooms and we're going to take a look at four of them today we've got one from a major manufacturer that's this one the olympus 35 to 70 mil f4 that's a constant f4 aperture that doesn't change as you zoom we've got three sigma lenses we've got the sigma zoom master 35 to 70 f2.8 to f4 so that's quite wide wide aperture at the wide end we've got another sigma zoom master uh, again a 35 to 70 uh, and that is 3.5 f3.5 to f4.5 so that one's a bit slower and then finally we've got this sigma this is a rather later one uh, this is the Sigma UC zoom 24 to 50. So that's really wide and that covers a lot of the wide uh, ranges. And that's F4 to F5.6. So a fairly slow lens, but one with some really useful um, focal length ranges. So, some of these lenses are a bit slow. In fact, most of them are a bit slow. One or two of them, this one in particular, are a little bit worn and need lubrication. They're all cheap from the lower end of the market and on paper they're not that great. But, equipment doesn't make the shot. The photographer makes the shot and used within their abilities these are excellent lenses and they can make some outstanding images. They're really useful as well. They cover a very wide range of useful focal lengths. It means you don't have to carry a bunch of primes with you. That means less weight, nice and easy to carry. They offer flexibility in framing a shot and all of them actually have pleasantly surprise me in use. So let's start with the Olympus lens. That's the 35 to 70 f4 constant aperture. Now I did used to have one of these a couple of years ago which I sold and I regretted it. I sold it because it was a little bit slow f4 maximum aperture. But I bought another one because its images are just so nice. This lens can really make some nice looking images. It's quite a good looking lens as well. Let's have a closer look. So you can see that it's got the traditional Olympus house style and the colour coding, which I do kind of like. I do like the way these Olympus lenses look. I think they are, apart from anything else, some of the best looking vintage lenses that there are. It's a very well made lens too. It's very solid, very tight and very together. Everything turns fluidly and nicely. There's a big focus ring at the end here. Here's the zoom ring in the middle. It does extend as it zooms, as you can see. That's the wide end and pull back for the long end. And here's the aperture ring at the back, running, as you can see, from f4 to f22. And this one is in really nice condition. It's not a particularly sought-after lens, and they are available pretty cheaply. I paid £30 for this one, and I consider that to be a real bargain because it's just such a nice lens. I do love these Olympus lenses and they are sometimes slightly cheaper than other brands but more importantly this one makes fantastic images. It's not particularly small, it is a fairly large lens and I think it's probably the largest of the 
three lenses that we've got on test here today but it does replace two or even three primes a 35 a 50 and a longer one uh, which in this case is 70 so it does replace a lot of primes that you would otherwise have to carry so it's a bit big but it's a lot less bother than carrying lots of primes around the image quality is fantastic it's got great color and strong contrast and that's a hallmark of olympus lenses it's a very cool look which i personally like very much lots of contrast lots of saturation contrast will drop with this one if it catches light at the wrong angle but you do also get some nice lens flares reflecting off the purple coatings which i kind of like but you can shield it with your hand or with a hood if that's not your cup of tea images have plenty of depth plenty of strength when it comes to sharpness this is actually quite a sharp lens it is more than acceptably sharp it's not quite to pancola standards but it's not too far off you're never going to find yourself thinking gosh this lens is really soft it just isn't that kind of lens it makes some very very nice blur it's nice and soft there's no untoward harshness that creeps in at any point that i could find the f4 maximum aperture means that you do need to get quite close to make blur but if you go to the long end uh, of 70 millimeters then you're going to get pretty much all the blur that you could ever want these vintage lenses it seems to me they give a certain amount of interpretation rather than mere representation as a modern lens might do in short it's a vintage lens and a very affordable one too 30 to 40 pounds will get you a very good one and at that price you really just can't go wrong a very very nice lens indeed highly recommended so let's have a look at our sigma lenses starting with this one this is the f 2.8 to f 435 to 70 millimeters and this is a lens that i think is possibly one of the cheapest i've ever bought this cost me all of 10 pounds it's a real unloved lens without even the kudos of a big name behind it these lenses were fairly cheap when they were new they were third party lenses and they're even cheaper now it's a little bit worn and a little bit sloppy but it's got some surprisingly nice glass in it let me show you more closely so this is a push pull zoom and when it is pulled that it is that is when it's uh, collapsed it's actually a really small lens it does extend a fair old bit when you pull it out but it's even so a fairly small lens it's very nicely made it seems to be mostly made of metal which is a good thing i can't see maybe little bits of plastic here and there in its construction but certainly the barrel is metal the focus ring is metal everything turns nice and smoothly the controls are uh, and nice there's the past sticker on there so somebody in the past has t taken care of this lens the aperture ring at the back is actually stepless on this one i don't know whether that's been de-clicked or whether that's an original feature but it's certainly stepless now i must admit I didn't expect too much from this lens. It's a cheap third party lens. It's been taken care of at some point, but I think in the last few years it's not been treated terribly well and the years have not been terribly kind to it. But I couldn't have been more wrong. This is a really nice lens. I expected it to be a little bit hazy, but it wasn't. It was clean and clear and lovely the glass and the optics are all in really nice 
condition. It makes fantastic colours. It's not quite in the Olympus style. A bit less cool, a bit less intense, I think. Maybe slightly less saturated, but nice nonetheless. Maybe you could call these colours a little more naturalistic, perhaps not quite as stylized as the Olympus colours. It's a very, very useful little lens. It covers a wide range of focal lengths and it's tiny. It's not much bigger than an average 50mm. Sharpness again, same as the Olympus, is entirely acceptable. It's certainly not soft. You'll never look at images from this lens and think that they are soft. It seems at least as sharp as the Olympus to me, maybe even a bit more so, but whatever the case, it is a sharp little lens. It's a fast little lens too. The maximum aperture is f2.8 at the wide end, so there is some blur available at the wide end, but not very much, especially as the minimum focus distance is not that close at 50 centimetres. It's a little bit slow at the long end at f3.5, but there's still some nice subject from background separation. So this is a very surprising lens which really exceeded my expectations, I am happy to say. It's nice and small, it covers a useful range of focal lengths, it replaces a, 20, uh, uh, a 35 and a 50 prime. And its images have a nice feel, they're attractive and they've got loads of personality and for £10 it would be very, very difficult to find better value. It does make lovely images, it's nice and light to carry it around, it's nice and cheap to buy. I really don't think you can go wrong with a Sigma Zoom ma uh, Master, especially as the optics seem to be so very nice. So that lens certainly comes recommended. Now the next lens we're going to look at today, I just bought on a whim, mainly because it goes so wide to 24 millimeters. I've only got one 24 millimeter lens. Uh, it's a, a, a rather careworn, uh, Miranda lens and it's not in terribly good condition so when I saw this at 24 I thought well that's really interesting. It's got an unusual zoom range, potentially replaces a 24, a 28, a 35 and a 50 mil. so you're saving carrying all those primes around, they're all available in this one little lens and that's pretty cool. It's a later lens I think this is an autofocus one actually and it's made in Nikon mount so of course it twists off the opposite way. Um, it's got electrical contacts here which I'll show you in a moment and I think this was possibly made for the later um, Nikon consumer film SLRs of the 90s perhaps early or mid 90s this is the original Plastic Fantastic. I think this is an entirely plastic lens, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. So there is our little Sigma very short zoom, or at least reasonably short zoom. Are we focused? Yes, we are. And this is really a nice little lens. You can see that it is all plastic. And there are those electrical contacts that I talked about. So I think this one is an autofocus lens. It's got this focus ring on the front here, but it's very light to turn. And I think I can hear motors turning in there when I turn it. It's got this great handy distance scale that moves on the front there. That's very handy um, to use. It's a nice small size and it's got modern multi-coatings on there, so that means good light transmission and less reflection, which can only be good for making images. You might ask the question, is it a vintage lens? Well, it's about 20 years old, so 
That sounds vintage enough to me. It is a bit of a crossover though. It's got those fairly modern coatings and it does seem to give a fairly modern sort of look. There may have been some computers involved in its design, I don't know. Uh, and that means less room, if that's so, it means less room for flaws and errors and so less potential for that vintage character. But actually in use, I didn't find that. I found this lens does have plenty of character and it does make unusual and interesting images. In fact, it makes some really nice images. They're very sharp. All the images are made with this lens are very clear and well defined. And I think I could kind of detect something of the color palette I've noticed with some Nikon lenses. That is the palette that emphasizes blues and reds. I really like it. And this one at times displayed something resembling it. I don't know if that's because it was it's uh, a Nikon mount lens and it was made for Nikon cameras, trying to reproduce something of that Nikon feel. I really don't know, but it did come through at one or two points. There isn't a great deal of blur with this one because it's a fairly slow lens. It's f four at the wide end and f5.6 at the long end which is 50 millimeters though it does give some blur if you're close enough to your subject and that blur is very nice i i rather liked it actually i think it gives a lovely feel to a shot so i think this one's probably best thought of as a wide lens with a very versatile range of focal lengths it's a great little lens really versatile, really flexible, very sharp and very useful. I paid £30 for it and at that price I think it's an absolute bargain. Finally in our short zoom odyssey we have the Sigma Zoom Master f3.5 to f4.5 35 to 70 so again that same focal length this one i think is in practicum mount let's take it off the adapter and this is a little bit of an orphan lens i think it's a late 80s lens and you can kind of tell by the design it's it's the sort of i don't know it reminds me of the xr3i school of design this one's had a hard life and it feels a little tired. Let's have a closer look. So there's our Sigma Zoom Master and you can see the traces of 80s design on here by these diagonal lines on the focus ring. And when I look at 80s design, I do wonder how can anything so awful have looked so good, but it really did and that just shows you how perceptions change. Not that this lens is a bad looking lens, it's nice enough. The uh, zoom ring is in the middle, it's a little bit stiff and awkward. The focus ring lubrication is dry and I think that shows two things. It, shows that perhaps the quality of the lubrication used on these lenses wasn't quite so fantastic as some of the other manufacturers and it also shows that the lens has led a rather hard life so it's a bit of an orphan lens you can see that zoom ring is rather difficult to control so it's a little bit rough and ready it was probably nicer when it was new the aperture ring is at the back and that again is a little bit rough and ready a little bit oh gosh that doesn't feel too mechanically nice it works perfectly well there's no problem with it but again it's not a it's not a mechanically beautiful lens. I must be fair, I'm sure it was rather nicer when it was new. So given its condition, which is not absolutely tip top, 
I wasn't expecting too much from this lens, but again, it surprised me. It seems to shoot, or rather it actually shoots really nicely. It's pretty sharp and it's no less sharp than any of the other lenses on test here today. So again, this lens earns the uh, standard of acceptably sharp. You're never going to think this is a soft lens. You're never going to think, my gosh, those images are awful. The contrast is perhaps a little less than some of the other lenses here today. So perhaps it's slightly less good in that respect. So perhaps because of that, colour seems slightly less vibrant in some shots a little bit less vital than the other lenses. Certain images have a bit of a slightly dull feel, although other shots in better light are much nicer. I wondered if there might be a bit of haze in this lens, but I really can't see any. The optics seem very clean. It's lived a hard life, so it wouldn't be surprising, but the optics do seem pretty clean. Often the general condition of a lens can give an indication of its optical performance. Neglected lenses are generally more likely to have haze and fungus. And I did wonder if this was a case in point, but actually looking at it under strong light, I don't think it is. I just think it's inherently got slightly less good contrast than the other lenses that we're looking at today. Blur is pretty nice as well, actually, but most is reserved for the long end as it's a little bit slower, f3.5 to f4.5. But if you stay really close to your subject, even at the wide end, you can coax a little bit of blur out of it. So this is a competent enough lens, though I don't think it quite matches up to the others here today. So there we are, four lovely short zooms. They all cover a very useful range of focal lengths. They are all affordable and although most of them are a little bit slow, they all will make you some fantastic images that importantly will be indistinguishable if you shoot them right from those made with faster, fancier and more expensive lenses. As far as which is the best, well, there's actually very little in it. Personally, I prefer the images from the Olympus lens because they seem to have that bit more saturation. And I think the least successful lens here is the Sigma Zoom Master 3.5 to 4.5. 35 to 70. That's the fourth one, the last one that we tested. So that's it from me for today. Please don't forget to like, subscribe and ring the bell before you go. And if you like the content on this channel and you would like to help it grow and develop, you'd like to help support it, you can do that at patreon.com forward slash scenography and you can do that for as little as one dollar per month. As always, thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time for some more Xenography.